Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's July 20, uh, 10th. I'm sorry, July 10th, and this will be our chart lesson for the day. And you can see uh, we're still on this. This is a daily chart with the envelope bands, and you can see we're still in this green channel. We're kind of right underneath. Notice that we pushed through the EMA. We pulled back and tested it. Turn down, we're continuing to bounce off that 21 bar EMA, which is what that middle bar is. These other bars are calculated on some other uh, criteria, but this middle bar is just a 21 uh, EMA, like usual, like we put on any of our charts. And you can see prices uh, bounce once again off that EMA. Uh, whether or not we'll go higher or we'll just break, bounce a second here and then turn lower, we'll just have to wait and see. My guess is our target is at least down here to where this trend channel line is, or this trend line is. Um, but if we push below this trend line, then uh, we could go all the way down. Uh, we could turn and go all the way down to the low side of this blue channel. As you can see, it's kind of been working along for a while. Pull this down a little bit. So you can see it a little higher angle. But there it is. So um, watch for that. Uh, for this 21 EMA, let's see if we get through it or not. If not, we may bounce again here. Uh, you can clearly see that we've made the measured move up by this orange line. And we've turned down off this upper trend channel line twice now. So I would watch this. This midline is going to be the key. Do we get through that below it? Uh, we'll see what happens. So there it is on the daily chart. Let's flip over to. I mean, you can see it's a fairly bullish day here. We close on our high. We'll flip over to the um, 2000 tick chart and take a look at it. Okay, here we have a look at the 2000 tick intraday chart. You can see that really it was a sideways day. But we closed on the high, basically, and uh, we opened way down here. So actually, where did they close yesterday, the, day, the previous trading day, Friday? So not much of an up day, but it looks like a big reversal bar because we traded down so far and then traded up. So really, in the big scheme of things, prices are not, they're just traded slightly. They closed slightly up from the previous trading day, which was on Friday, I guess. So... Um, or actually, I'll take that back. That would be, yeah, that'd be Friday. I'm sorry. Sunday night would be in today's trading. So, yeah, that would be Friday afternoon's close there. Um, so, anyway, you can see mostly sideways. But we did close on the high. So, that's a slight positive. We'll see what tomorrow brings. If we'll get some follow-through buying or if it'll turn back down again. But here's what today looks like. Let's uh, let's zoom in here and we'll go through the trades and um, there's quite a few trades today so we'll go through them and we'll wrap this day up and seven o'clock came just as we're pushing up through here to these new highs right in here somewhere and then uh, we already had looks like a close outside it, there's a little spike in channel it looks like we did get a close outside a couple of legs up and then it turns down. And we end up with two legs down, and then it turns back up again, basically. Uh, is this a convincing close outside? Mm, maybe not. It looks real close. So um, it also looks like we might have a slight overshoot here as well. So it's hard to say if this was a convincing close outside. This might have been a little lower like so. And then this could have been a little higher. And maybe we did get a little bit of an overshoot up there. Sometimes it's hard to know if you've drawn the channel exactly right or not. But generally, if you get close, you're going to be in the right ballpark. And you're going to come up with the right conclusions. So if you saw it a little flatter like that, I wouldn't say you're wrong at all. And that may not even be an overshoot. We just might have closed. I mean, all those are still. I mean, it may not even been an overshoot. So uh, it's hard to say. But generally, I'll do it off the closes first, and that would have put it right along there. And this looks, all of them respected that, except this last little push, which looks like an overshoot. So either way, it doesn't really matter. You still come up with the same thing. Um, 
you get the break and then you uh, you get this channel working down you get a break two legs to a new low and then it makes a higher low here I like going long there to try to run back up for the retest of this eye even if it's gonna be a range day there's a good chance we're gonna test these highs again we didn't quite get there on this one so there's a little room to spare there and this thing takes off if you caught this one trade that might be all you need because you probably get a runner on it and it just takes off um, and then we just start we run into some risk resistance here and we start working sideways but notice that there's a there's a triple test right here uh, with room to get out before coming back so I like that one this one is tempting to go short it's just a double top though I, I'm a little leery of that one with the with everything still pointing up at this point so I think you need to wait and of course it drops really starting on you got a real small range there that turns into be two tiers and so it drops here and it bounces this one's tempting here it's just a first entry uh, it's a failed breakout though maybe you take that trade but we could have been done to the upside because this is all played out over here so you don't know if it's going to bounce and go back up like that but it does it runs back up and then you get a triple test with a fairly decent signal bar I like going short there uh, it comes back and you get a lower high here with another big signal bar I don't know if you could have got in this one because it gaps over there and keeps going I think it backed up did it back up enough to feel you on a at the right at the original entry spot I'm not sure so um, and then it bounces again uh, and you get a second entry right here I meant to mark that one um, that should be a red one that's a second entry right off the key entry point uh, you can see that working down through there and it's a fairly bearish bar so and there's plenty of room to get out that's the key if there's not room to get out before hitting this low again then you might want to reconsider it um, notice then we get a triple bounce a triple test here but it, it each time it makes a little lower uh, slightly lower low there uh, so that's a you probably want to wait on a higher low here to be sure and then that comes right here I mark this one green because we do have this downtrend and this would be the first break but this closes outside and it is a higher low and we just made a triple test so we're probably going to at least run back up and test these highs and of course it, it goes much higher here it just keeps going so once again if you got long here you might have got more than uh, you might have got a runner out of this one and of course you get your clothes outside and it's just kind of chopping around sideways but notice you finally get this double top over here and this is a first entry second entry so I like a big bearish bar I like going short there and again it just takes off so you probably get a runner here and you could ride it all the way back down till you get a little failed break lower and it bounces again and then we're just kind of bouncing along you, you can't really go short here and it's there's nothing to go long on there's no, no real good setup to go long and you see what happens it fails and breaks lower so now you got a, another failed breakout out of here um, you do get a break of the blue channel here too and it's look it's trying to go lower um, and you might have called this a triple test but the signal bar is not good anyway good enough anyway so you got to wait on a higher low which comes here and you're just banking on this being a failed breakout and a higher low and uh, it's a breakout pull back long off the highs right here this is a little congested and of course it takes on a, off it respects and that also confirms this trend channel line so there's multiple reasons to go long there you got the EMA below you you got the trend line below you you got the possibility this is going to be a failed breakout it's going to get back in the range again all those things are going for you there and it's giving you a chance to enter at the very lows of the range so I like that one runs up and it's just this is a little too congested and it's still inside this trend channel uh, but when it drops lower boom it's gone it runs down and it bounces in the same place again runs up uh, you do have a tr trend line working here it's the first break and then it just turns down and takes off and so I don't think you can go short there right into that EMA with that being the first break of that you are looking for prices to maybe try to retest these lows again and of course they do and if you get a measured move that's this dash line based on the width of this but it just shoots right through 
but it does find support slightly below that. And notice you make a one, two, three triple test and a big nice bar. This actually breaks lower first and turns up. You could trade that on an engulfing bar if you wanted. Go long there. Um, I'd probably wait for this to close since this looks a little bit congested and not necessarily getting quick rejection. This looks like the final rejection after the triple test. And if it breaks above that, we're probably going on higher. And sure enough, there it goes. And we're just kind of working sideways here. This is a double bottom and a very low risk bar that kind of confirms that trend channel. It's only a first entry, but because it's so low risk and uh, double bottom and off a key entry point, maybe you take that trade. And you can't enter on this one. It does come back here again and gives you, uh, this would just be a first entry, but again, it breaks lower and turns up. The reason I like this one is it's back inside the channel and it pulls back and tests it and instantly turns up and closes on this big bullish bar. Um, it breaks lower first and turns up. So you might even trade this on the engulfing bar. Normally I wouldn't mark this, but we're really playing the range rules here more than anything because we're back in the range and you can see it was acting as resistance and then all of a sudden it closes above it really one, two, three times, and then you get this happening. So I like that trade. You can't enter in here, breaks out, fails, but no setup. It does give you a lower high here with enough room to get out back before these lows. So you might take that trade on a breakout, a lower high off the breakout. Uh, there's a failure here, but you're not really looking for that in this sideways stuff. And you really don't have room to scalp out anyway. And you can see what, you, what happens. You probably you would have survived, but you would have had to ride this out a few bars. And uh, there's a little breakout pullback short, but you get you got to get short right into the previous support of the range. And you would expect the prices to come back and test it again to see if it's going to hold. And we're playing the range once again. And of course it does. So now you got your close outside, a new low, and then it makes a higher low. And that also gives you three tests of this level and a fairly decent bar. It's not perfect, but it's good enough uh, to go long right off that support area and boom, off it goes. And then it fails out the top. Now, notice that this there's been no break of this. It's really a double top here. It's a fail. It might make a slightly higher, tick higher or so. I'm not even sure if it's, yeah, it's probably gonna be a tick higher. Uh, but the reason I still like that trade is it's a failed breakout and there's like three ticks. That's about as low a risk entry as you could, uh, way away from the EMA. Uh, if it breaks lower, there's a good chance you're gonna at least get a scalp out of that. Uh, it's, I mean, you just can't hardly pass that up. I mean, if this would have been a bigger bar and you had took a lot of risk, I'd say no, wait on the lower high or something, but I mean, that's about as good as it gets right there. And then you, you get a close outside here, a couple of them, and a new low, and then it's running up, close outside. It tries to make a new high and turns down. This actually breaks higher and turns down. Uh, you might trade that on the engulfing bar, but I don't think I would trade that after it closes because it's such a big bar, and it's right at the midline, and we didn't get down to the lows last time, so it could be working higher. Uh, I think it's too risky to enter such a big bar right into the midline. I missed like 13 ticks. Um, and it would have ended up working out, but it, you would have had to ride this out a little bit. So I just don't think that one's hardly worth taking. I did mark it green because there's some reasons to like it. So maybe you take that trade. And of course, that took us sideways into 230. And I don't see anything else there worth fiddling with. So, uh, But there it is. You're really just playing the range and a couple of the trends within the range today. Uh, mostly playing the range. Uh, not the best trading day, but there were several trades here. Surely you could find two or three good trades out of all the ones we had today. Um, if you listen to me enough, you know that that's kind of my strategy to find two or three of the best trades every day. And because you don't want to, you don't, if you, and when you want to increase your, profits you don't take more trades you still look to take two or three of the best trades and you increase your leverage 
and of course when you start increasing your leverage you do that much slower you do that very slowly because it's not as easy as you think it is every time you add leverage the stress the amount of money that prices are ticking against you when they're going against you and um, it puts a lot of stress on you so it's a lot harder to 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 increase leverage as fast as most people think they said you know I have people ask me won't you just trade 100 contracts and take one trade a day and you'd be you know you'd be great well you could do that but there's a lot of stress when you figure 100 contracts and every tick is worth 1250 so um, that is twelve hundred fifty dollars every time prices tick against you and sometimes you might have to ride out, ride out a seven or eight nine tick is going against you in a winning trade and so I mean it's tough to sit there and look at yourself being down ten grand just trying to scalp out uh, a couple of grand so just keep that in mind I mean really you'd be trying to scalp out about five grand on four ticks something like that um, so you're trying you're going to risk that kind of money for five grand um, it just puts a lot of stress on you it's really no different than trading it with five contracts but it's the amount of pressure and stress from losing you know if you take a loss how much money you lose so that's where it gets you mentally so just remember that um, it just takes longer to build leverage than most people uh, really think about so they think oh if you can do this just trade 100 contracts it unfortunately and there may be some people that can but the average person can't I can't you know when I start getting those kind of numbers I just fall all to pieces I can't, I can't have so I don't even try so for anybody thinking that that's the reason but anyway there it is uh, that's how I see it today it's really a range day and you might have adjusted this as the day goes on I just like to keep it where it was so it don't confuse people but you can see maybe it was a little bigger like that and then that gives you the equal overshoots on each side and the midline looks pretty doggone good right there so my guess is that's where it really was so you probably had to adjust it some uh, but anyway uh, decent trading day and not much more we can say about it so we'll be back again to do it tomorrow uh, I'm going to wrap it up for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.